Now Corps' boss, Stan Marshall, had lots to say today about the status of the Muskrat Falls project. It's the first time he's spoken publicly in the wake of the protests and hunger strikes. Now, since taking over the job of CEO in April, Stan Marshall has had to steer the project through ballooning costs, disputes with the main contractor, Astaldi, and schedule delays. Now, the protest over methyl mercury was yet another hurdle for the beleaguered multi-billion dollar project. I sat down with Stan Marshall earlier today and began by asking him why he hasn't been heard from till now. This event of two weeks ago now came as a surprise and it was very challenging for all concerned. So it was a very, very busy period. Were but you afraid of the, anything that if you came out and said anything it might inflame in any way? I certainly don't want to inflame, but I'm not afraid of saying anything. Concerns about methyl mercury. They have been percolating for years, going back to five years ago with the uh, uh, joint review panel. Could all this have been avoided, do you think, if Nalcor had taken those concerns more seriously? Well, you can always look back and say you could have done more, and it may have helped. But there's a lot of work done. I think that's what's being ignored here. A lot of work done. And I think there, there are a lot of people who are with a vested interest of using some issue to stop the project or to do other things. And so um, a little bit, I'm a little bit surprised it's come this far. I mean, I'm not a world expert on metal mercury. It helps that I'm a chemical engineer. I never thought chemical engineering would be beneficial in the electric utility business. So, you know, I'm conversant in the language of the thing. Um, this is an issue that has arisen whenever a reservoir is built, even for hydro dams or for municipal water supply. So it's a, it's a fairly well-known issue. And when you think about it, despite all the discussion, there's been, in my, to my knowledge, there's not been one incident ever of hundreds of dams or thousands of dams where the filling of a reservoir has caused significant health concerns or health problems. Not one documented case I'm aware of that flooding a reservoir has caused harm due to metal mercury. So it, it's, in, it's in the environment. It's everywhere. So do I take from that that you're not on board with the Harvard study? Well, it's not the Harvard study theory, strictly speaking. It's a, a study from a professor at the Harvard. And the Harvard study is just like all the others. There's some, there's some uh, data, some speculation, but there's nothing in that that says this will cause harm. The difficulty with something like methylmercury, I mean, a lot of people hear that term, and it causes great concern. They're afraid of things they don't understand. But methylmercury exists everywhere. At the levels we're talking about, we're talking about parts per million or less, parts per billion. It's in the water reserve uh, reservoirs here in, on the Avalon. It was in Bay Despair. Every reservoir that's ever been built is there. So, and in a knowledge of the people, they think this is very peculiar. This is standard. And when you look at even Labrador, so I say to the people of Labrador, when they built the Upper Churchill, the reservoir in the Upper Churchill is 60 times larger than the little one we're building now. The reservoir in Muskrat is gonna be about 11 square kilometers, a pond. The Upper Churchill was 2,400 square kilometers, the biggest in Canada. And so the amount of metal mercury leaching into the water in the Upper Churchill is going to be 60 times greater than what we'll experience here. So ask people, in their own experience, is there a documented case where a filling in the Upper Churchill caused a health problem in, in uh, Lake Melville area? That's the reality. There's no need to be panicked here. The impression that people have of Nalcor is that they know what's best. And I'm wondering if hubris played any role in where we are today in them not communicating more effectively. We haven't, we haven't done a good job of communication. That is quite true. We could have done a better job. And I'm not sure it's hubris or just lack of understanding. You, know, you had people who were doing something that hadn't been done in this organization for a long, long time, and no personal experience. You know, this issue of metal mercury, for example, it's, it's always there. I encountered it when I was building dams in Central America. In Central America, because there's more vegetation, the temperature is higher, it's, you know, it's more acute. So you've got to be sensitive to the issues and also so sensitive to the, the person out there. All too often in Nalcor, you know, there are engineers here, they're quite competent in the work they're doing, but they sometimes speak as engineers. I'm an engineer too, but sometimes they fail to convey to the ordinary person about the issues they're dealing with. 
and Mettenberg Music Example. Last week, government agreed to four conditions that the protesters, hunger strikers, wanted, um, and they agreed with it. What do you think of that deal that was made? Well, we certainly welcomed it. I mean, we had to do something. This interruption, first of all, was a safety issue. Tremendous costs involved here. What kind of costs? They're significant. We, we won't know for quite some time. In the millions? In the hundreds of millions. You know, you can't take delays of several weeks, which spread, those delays will carry on until next summer. For example, work being scheduled for the wintertime cannot be done now because the, the equipment is not there. So it, it depends where it is on the schedule. So the delays go from days to months. Getting back to the agreement that was made with government and uh, indigenous leaders from Labrador, was there anything that was agreed to that you wouldn't have agreed to? Uh, not that I wouldn't agree to it because I always agree when people say, let's go back and determine the science to determine what we should be doing. So I have no problem with that. I think it's a good approach. Let's go back to science. So no, I have no problem with the agreement at all. I think it's, uh, I support it fully. What do you think of uh, removing soil from the reservoir area? I don't think it'll ever come to that. I'd be very surprised. Again, this is- In so any form? Or in any form. There's been no instance where soil has been removed from the reservoir. First of all, I don't think it's necessary. It's never been done before, even when you're building municipal reservoirs that I'm aware of. It's going to be very costly, depending on how much you want to do. I mean, what does removing the soil mean? Does it mean moving six inches? Does it removing all the topsoil? Does it remove all the soil down to bedrock? So it's undefined. Then you've got consequences of that. Anyone who's dug a hole in the ground knows that when water gets into it, it's kind of messy. So I think to do that, you would require a different environmental process, more delays, more costs, and it may, in fact, make things worse. This is something that's never been done before, never been studied. And, you know, if you start removing any significant amount of soil, you would have a mountain. We did a quick look at it and said, well, to remove what, most of the topsoil, it'd be a hill one kilometer by one kilometer by 10 kilometers high. And I said, the mercury's there, so things will leach out. So it would, I don't think it will ever be necessary. I don't think the science will ever support that. It will have risks that we don't know. Long, much more risk than we know now what, what we're doing here. There's going to be an independent assessment of the need for this first phase of flooding. It's probably underway right now. Are you confident that this flooding is going to get the go-ahead? It has to get a go-ahead. Right now, we're not doing any flooding as we sit here today. No flooding happening right now. The flooding we're talking about, which is actually the um, flooding of the reservoir at a certain level for the winter, that has to be done to protect the site for the winter. That has to be done. We have to start this weekend. If not, we endanger the site. We will lose our insurance, presumably, because the insurers will not cover us. I was, I was, that's my own thoughts, but I'd be very surprised if the insurers said, if you don't flood this winter, we can't insure the site. I'm wondering what you want to say to Billy Gauthier and all those protesters. We are doing the right thing. It must run false. I committed to that. What they mean by making the Muskrat Falls right, I don't know. I think it means different things to different people. All I can say is we will do what's right. With no harm to the people who live in that region? Our safety is our number one concern for our workers and for the public in general. Everything we're doing, we, b we have that as number one. And I am absolutely convinced that we will do it without any harm to anybody.